everyone, this is Mindy Egan for Lawn Fawn, and today's video I am making a card featuring the delightful Daisy die set. I'm going to start first by creating my background, so I will be using the Sunburst backdrop, and I'm going to die cut this from white cardstock that is 80 pounds. Once I have it die cut, that centerpiece will pop out, but I want that put back in place. So I flipped my panel over and I put that back into its position and I'm adhering just some low tack post-it tape to the back to hold that in place while I ink blend. Now I really wanted to have kind of a magical background to this. So I'm going to start off with a Kitsch Flamingo Distress Oxide ink blending in the center and working my way out. Then I'm coming in with Peacock Feathers and I'm going around the outer edge, working my way and overlapping that Kitsch Flamingo. I really thought I would have gotten a brighter purple between the two blends, but it wasn't quite bright enough for me. So I am bringing in Wilted Violet and I am going to go right over where the pink and the blue meet. And then I will go back and forth between the colors just to help kind of smooth out that transition. And then here is a look at my die cut pieces using the Delightful Daisy die set. I did cut two of everything because I want to have two of them for the front of my card. Now it would have been really smart to use the double sided adhesive sheets for my base but I completely forgot about them. So I just added some tape runner to the entire front of my base for the Delightful Daisy. And then I'm just going to do some die cut inlay for all of my pieces. The petals I did in Pixie Dust cardstock, so it is the white sparkle cardstock, and I thought that was just a really good look for the petals because my background is going to be so colorful and busy. The outline of the stamp is die cut from black licorice, and then the stem, the leaves, and the center of the flower is die cut from shimmer cardstock. I used the pastel and the tropical pack. Now I do have the light green stem, but later on I take that out and I add the dark green stem to match the leaves. My thought process for this card kind of changed throughout the course of this video making it. So I had come back to my panel and I actually ink blended all the way around the edges of the cardstock. And then I did go just back over those colors to kind of help brighten them up a little bit. I thought about just having the daisies in the center, but then I thought it would look really nice with some grass on the bottom. Off screen, I die cut the metal border. Now this has longer blades of grass that I thought would it kind of go better with the daisies, kind of fit into a magical theme a little bit better. And I'm going to be ink blending on it. Now, since this is a shimmer cardstock as well, it's very slick. So the Distress Oxides are really kind of, you don't need a lot. They blend really well on this. I started with, um, I think it was mold Lawn, but it wasn't dark enough for me. So I went back in with Lucky Clover and that really was a great contrasting color. Now I can't have a magical background with adding some flicks of metallic colors on here. So I am using the Gonzai Tombi Starry Colors and I have gold here, one of the golds, any of them would really work. So I just added a couple drops of water to the gold and the white, mix that around with my paintbrush and I'm adding splatters to the entire background. So I apologize here, my head is going to get in the way just a little bit, I could not crop it out enough but I die cut the Kohl's ABCs out of some metallic gold cardstock and I am using the grid line on my mat to line these up perfectly straight. And I do kind of finagle it a little bit with my tweezers to help get the spacing pretty even across all of them. Once I have that lined up, I'm just taking a piece of scotch tape and I put that over the top to pick them all up at once. And then I can see through it so I know exactly where it's going on the front of my metal border. So I have that metal border loaded into my Misty and I lined up my Smiles die cut word on the bottom there and then I could place the word sending up above it, make sure it was really nice and straight and then I can prep my cardstock with an anti-static powder tool. Now I am going to be white heat, heat embossing this and you can use embossing ink but I thought the white pigment ink or the Yeti ink would work better because it's textured. I was a little worried that my embossing powder wouldn't quite get into all of the grooves. So by using that Yeti pigment ink, I think this really helped. So I stamped it twice and then I'm sprinkling on some white embossing powder. And after I have my heat tool warmed up, I can come in and melt that embossing powder. And I think this worked amazing. It really got into the grooves and just really added a nice pop for that sentiment on the metal backdrop. 
Then I can just finish putting my scene together, so I'm adding my metal border down at the bottom of my card using a tape runner. I'm going to also go ahead and get my smiles word added to the bottom. So I still have it attached to that scotch tape and I'm adding little dots of liquid glue to the back of my die cut letters. And then I can center this at the bottom. Once I'm happy with the placement, I can just push that down and I'm going to hold that for just a couple seconds. And then I can carefully peel back that scotch tape. So this is perfect because it's not ripping my cardstock or my letters whatsoever. Then I'm arranging my daisies on the front of my card about where I want them to go. And notice I did leave that centerpiece in there. I just really like the stitching of that sunburst of this die. So I added liquid glue to the back of one of my daisies, added that to the front of the card, just held that for a moment so that liquid glue uh, holds that in place. And now I'm adding my second daisy. And I wanted this popped up just a little bit. So these foam squares, they are the really thin foam squares. And I added them to the side of the daisy that is going to hang off. The other side is going to be overlapping. And what I also like to do is take some non-stick scissors and actually trim some of these right in half so I can get pieces small enough to fit on those stems. Then after I remove the backing of those foam squares, I'm taking a little bit of liquid glue and adding that to the pieces that are going to overlap on the other daisy. Now I do have some card bases that are already pre-cut. I just folded it in half and reinforced that fold with my bone folder. I added tape runner to the front of that and now I'm adding my card front to that so I can secure everything down. I did have a little bit of a white strip at the bottom so I just took that over to my paper trimmer and trimmed that off. And typically for the inside of my cards, I leave them blank so that way I can use it for any occasion. I hope you enjoyed today's inspiration using the delightful Daisy die set. Thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you again soon.